Hi, my name is Big Parkin, and uh, this is the first of uh, a series I'm going to be calling uh, Research Runs. So uh, I'm going to be doing a run with someone who either uh, has got experience with uh, with heart disease or is running a London Marathon for British Heart Foundation or has got something to do with research for um, uh, British Heart Foundation as well. Give them a chance to tell and share their stories. Um, this video is half an hour long, but uh, today we met a really, really a uh, special guy called uh, Pete Robertson and uh, I think half an hour of time is well worth the story about um, recovery, bravery, uh, some fear and um, humility as well. So please I hope, uh, hope you get a lot out of this, uh, I certainly did today and uh, see you at the end. Hiya, so uh, my name is Mick Parkin, work for British Heart Foundation, going to be running the London Marathon in October here with uh, also Pete Robertson. Uh, coming along today and uh, we're going to have a bit of a natter about how we ended up on this path and uh, how the training's going and uh, share it with uh, everybody out there. Uh, we've definitely got one thing in common, we've both got a race two and a half grand before October. So if anybody's yep. watching this and fancies donating, we're going to put the links to our various um, uh, donation pages uh, in the in the text below as well however it works on youtube we'll work it out so anyway we're going to head off that way and uh see you in a bit hi so we're out on the on the path seeing the sights and sound what park is this so this is uh, Manor School uh, 5K Park. Manor School 5K Park. He's by the Park Park K Runners. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So we've definitely got a, a lot quieter than we would on a Saturday morning. Absolutely. Yeah, so, um, Peter, would you prefer Peter, yeah? Yeah. Uh, Pete's doing the London Marathon in uh, in October. And just wanted to say a bit about how you ended up running the marathon for Heart Foundation. So, yeah, so, I'm, uh, I was a member of the uh, cardiac athletes, which I joined swiftly after suffering uh, from a heart attack. Yeah, a uh, sudden heart attack, which I came out of the blue, not expecting at all. And um, I noticed a post by British Heart Foundation in the cardiac athletes looking for willing volunteers. Yeah, and uh, it basically resonated with me a hell of a lot uh, because during the after the heart attack, it was all a bit of a shock, didn't really know what was going on. Uh, British Heart Foundation uh, was there, I was able to call them up, get some advice, oh, fantastic. talk to like-minded people, try and understand a little bit of what had been going on with me. Yeah. And so was that like the heart helpline? Yeah, it was the yeah, heart helpline, yeah. Okay. yeah. And they self sent me a, uh, a pack with all the relevant booklets, talking about nutrition, talking about lifestyle, talking about being active and, and what all these things meant, what stents were and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So yeah. because of that and help I received, it just resonated that I'd be a willing volunteer to um, put my name forward and see if I could do something to give back. Fantastic, fantastic. And you know how you get not since a heart attack? So the biggest area of concern for me is anxiety. Yeah. Since the heart attack, running in particular has become more difficult. Yeah. Um, normally within the first K, most people want to stop anyway, let's face yes. it. Yes. But it seems tenfold. And it's also the worry of doing threshold runs. Mm -hmm. When I come to do thresholds... Is that kind of pushing yourself as fast as yeah. you can, yeah? I dread them. Yeah. They're often on a Thursday. I did the threshold this Thursday, just gone, using the uh, British Art Foundation coaches. And oh the... right, what, what's that been like, the, the coaches? For... So, yeah. it's been really... You've not actually really used good. them yet. Yeah. yeah. I was a little bit sceptical to begin with, so I'll do some of my own training plans. And yeah. I wondered how it fit in. But to be fair, I was able to provide as much as I could to them. And uh, they've been really good at fitting it in. And it pretty much looks like how I would link my training plan program out, yeah. but with their sessions. Nice one. So the first threshold I did, I failed at. Yeah. Failure often comes with success. 
Uh, but it's that's around my anxiety a little bit. Yeah. And the threshold session I did this on this Thursday, Don, worked out really well. And oh, uh, sorry. successfully completed it. And I was really happy with how the session went. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Oh, sorry, I'm legging it behind. I think I know the way down there, you don't. Alright, fantastic. Well, we just get past this, this Don. This is the only narrowest bit. Right, right, I'll record again. Good stuff. And uh, oh, yeah. the anxiety side of the running, how's that? Is, is you know, how are you looking at managing that? Well, I've, I've spoke to various people, uh, talked to friends, family, uh, previous coaches, and um, especially what one coach, uh, Shane Robinson, he was, he's been really helpful talking me through how to best try and manage it. Trying to think uh, positive thoughts yes. prior to the running. It doesn't always work. Yeah. Because I can think about running all day. Yeah. And it kind of has a negative impact. Yes. As I approach the session, I've been sat in my car on the driveway terrified getting out yeah because i'm home i'm ready to go running i don't want to get out of the car because i know that then the session's got to start yeah uh it's just managing it day by day really yeah oh, good stuff good stuff and the actual obviously the uh, the running you've done previously I, I know you said you did an iron man previously yeah yeah so i i uh, i basically train for half iron distance is my main distance. Yeah. Uh, I've done, I think, around 15 or more half iron distances, various sprints, the Olympic distance, and two full iron uh, distance. That's amazing. Was that the 70 odd miles? So it's um, it's basically 70.3 miles a half. Wow. And, uh, it's 140.6 Blimey, Nora. miles. Yeah. Is the full. 2.4 uh, swim, 112 yeah. bike, yeah. and the marathon at the end. Fantastic, fantastic. And uh, uh, feelings about doing the actual marathon in October, what are your thoughts? Well, I've never actually ran a marathon yeah. separate to doing any of the triathlon events. It's a new concept to think of. Often in what I do is normally endurance. Yeah. It's about hanging on to the grim end. Yes. It's all grinding it out. On the triathlon. Yes. And it's normally at lower pace. Yeah. And I end up doing a bit of run walk strategy. Absolutely. Uh, it's a long day. Well, I, but uh, with the, the London Marathon, never had an opportunity to do such a big on any race before. I know it's massive, isn't it? It's really hard to get into it. Absolutely massive. Yeah. And that, do you know, I'd actually not applied before in the past because it was active. Yeah. And you constantly see on the, when he basically comes out, who hasn't got in. Yes. You hear more about friends and family. Oh, who absolutely. Got in, rather than who have got in. Yeah. So, to get an opportunity like this, to actually get in. Yes. And run, it's just amazing. It and, is, it is. And to be able to actually train to be able to race that marathon rather than just get through it for me. Yeah. Is what, what I'm putting down as a challenge. Fantastic. Um, so, when I first became aware of Pete, um, it was, I work for Hard Foundations a day job as area manager. So if you've been in any of our shops, either donate in stock or buying some bargains and things like that um, so it's my job to make sure that those shops are nice and have good things in them at the right price so on our website saw an article hopefully this wind is not cutting everything out we'll see this might be a bit of subtitle actually later on if not this is, uh, our, this is our hill train oh yeah, yeah exactly exactly so I saw an article on the company website about some uh, research that uh, Dr. Sinner is doing. I think it's at Oxford or Cambridge. Um, 
and you put a piece in there that I don't think you need it. I think I like myself painted so what would you do to that? It's amazing pioneering technology that yeah. you can imagine all this these sort of bomb sized patches they can actually bridge healthy heart to another piece of healthy heart yeah. and be actually grafted on to the heart. So and almost like Lego bricking the, the bits together so yeah. they're working properly. Yeah, yeah. And to almost bypass the part of the damaged heart and almost restore that that, that inefficiency or deficiency yeah. back to normal. Fantastic. It's amazing to think that's going to happen. That's really good. And there's uh, thousands of those bits of research going on across the country. And this is going to be my bit of a, you know, charity sales pitch here. Uh, during the lockdown, we lost about 60 million quid from fundraising events having to be knocked on the head, like the London Marathon, all kinds of things. Obviously, my shops have been shut for effectively two winters. Um, and that affects, obviously, the sales affects the amount of stock we get in, things like that. It's left kind of a 60 million pound hole in uh, uh, the amount of money that, well, we made a 60 million pound loss, so it's a big thing, so. I, um, any, any of you guys that are out there actually shopping in the shops, donating, running like uh, Peter is here, Peter is here, absolutely bless you, because you're getting us back on our feet there again, so fantastic. Um, yeah, go for it. So in terms of the heart attack, then, you know, it's happening out there to a lot of people in all different walks of life, you know, whether they're young, old, it, it doesn't care really, heart, cardiovascular disease, he's, he's quite happy to attack anybody to be fair. Yeah. And when it does, it does turn people's lives upside down. Um, it's a very frightening experience. It comes in all sorts of combinations. Yeah. From heart attack to requiring bypasses or uh, to have pacemakers fitted yeah. or even cardiac arrest. Yeah. Um, and all of this takes a huge, a huge emotional strain on the individual and their families. And um, I just feel that the British Art Foundation, right. I mean, watch their, what they're trying to achieve and all the good work they're doing can help ease some of that pain that some of these individuals and families are going through. Uh, and it doesn't come cheap. Yeah. And of course, they, they need the money to do this. Um, at the time, I needed them. I needed somebody to talk to on the end of the phone because, as I say, it happened out of the blue. I was very fit. I was, I was racing at peak condition. Come to the end of my season, I just ran a really good. Well, I just had a really good half Ironman distance triathlon. Got sub five thirty. What I was after. That's amazing. I'd had a couple of weeks off, and I was starting setting myself up for the new season ahead and um, I was completing a week worth of testing when I got to the end of that week and I'd worked really hard on the Sunday final uh, critical swim and speed test and then a gym session went to bed that night not feeling the best just a little under the weather uh, my wife wasn't very well she had the flu at 12 midnight, I was woken by a lot of pain across the clavicular area. Yeah. And um, I kind of put it down to it was just de uh, delayed onset of muscle soreness. And with the wife having flu, I thought I'd also come down with Yeah, something. yeah, to understand so, that. Um, I ignored it. Yeah. And it got worse. I was. I was struggling to breathe. Um, I had no painkillers in the house. Which I did go searching through all the clothes. Yeah, I'd imagine, yeah. To get my hands off. And um, I just sat up in bed and put up with it because I couldn't actually lay down. As soon as I started to lie down, 
left, right, or even on my back, and my breathing got really, really difficult. Uh, no way did I imagine I was having a heart attack. Um, absolutely. The wife uh, tried to offer to take me to hospital about three or four in the morning. I'm thinking, what, for a cold? Yeah. For some muscle soreness? Uh, but no, I persevered. I had to be at work that morning um, in Oxford, which was three and a half hours away. Um, so I basically got in the car early and set off down to Oxford all the way down. Wow. Breathing. Bloody to come yeah. harder and harder. Yeah. Um, there was a strange clacking noise coming out of my chest on exhale. And uh, I just started to feel really bad. Luckily, I got to, to work. I checked in at reception and then told them I was going into town, yeah. which was Whitney Town Centre in Oxfordshire, and uh, to get some painkillers. But by the time I parked the car, I was really struggling to walk Bloody hell. and even breathe. Yeah. And there happened to be a doctor surgery. I spotted, luckily. Right I place, right time. Her. Yeah. Yeah, it's unbelievable, Nick, that. I mean, that was a. That was a bait, I think. And um, yeah, they did some tests, what they called an ambulance. And uh, once they got the they diagnosed that I was, was actually having a heart attack. Which, at that moment, is when it turned. Here, yeah, and, uh, and then it was just an emotional roller coaster from that moment on, and I just couldn't wait to get to the hospital, which they were amazing. The paramedics took about 30 minutes to get me to. So, what are the odds on being on such a Absolutely. Place to be. The specialist centre there, yeah. They opened the doors at the back, they took me straight out, straight into theatre, and they carried out the emergency operation going in through my wrist. Through your wrist? Yeah. Uh, so it was amazing, really, how they did it. And I was I was awake during the whole procedure. Yeah. On drugs, various things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was watching this on two big 50 inch screens exactly what they were doing and where the blockage was in my uh, LED uh, often oh what's the LED what is that I saw that new well it's the it's the left ventricle yeah um, of the heart uh, obviously supplying the blood and the oxygen to various parts um, they, it's nicknamed the widow maker although it's not something you want to hear is it no no, no. It's, uh, the surgeons do say that yeah. they don't particularly like that word, but it's my particular blockage was right on the Y section. Yeah, it's why they call it the widow maker because it's blocking everything. Right, okay. Going out. So, and the, the downside is was not knowing these early signs of the heart attack. Um, they estimate that I was in the heart attack uh, situation. For about 12 hours. Bloody hell, I didn't realise it could go on for that long. It's something I should know from working with Heart Foundation, but 12 hours. Yeah, and the yeah. longer you are in the heart attack condition, the longer uh, the damage. Once you start going into a heart attack, your heart starts to damage. Yeah. And those cells die off. And I've been in this condition for 12 hours. The surgeon at the side of my bed, he was, he was really good. He was really comforting and uh, reassuring. And he basically says, look, Peter, you've made it this far. Most don't get out the back of the ambulance. Right. And that, that just set me off in a flood of tears again. Yeah. So I was just realising how incredibly lucky I was to be in their care at that moment because with the sport I also do 
and we all do running. Yeah. I do the cycling, the swimming, especially the swimming. How scary it would be oh, should it happen. Oh yeah, you're in you're a bad out. situation there for you. On your swimming, yeah. So yeah, so I'm incredibly fortunate. I had the right amount of care around me. That's it's awesome. Well, I'm so glad as well, otherwise obviously you wouldn't be here today or no. Yeah. I was referred to rehab. They give you some time to settle down. Yeah. And um, you start getting accustomed to all the, the different new drugs, statins and, and aspirin and, and blood thinners and all the new world that you now live in. Yeah. Living with cardiovascular disease. And um, you start, you sign up for a rehab program. And that's the physios within the hospital dedicated to as a dedicated cardio team for yeah. rehabilitation mm -hmm. and I absolutely love that rehab group they, they had such a wide mix of people uh, and all ages I think at the time my group was I was the youngest at only 47 uh -huh. so it was quite young to have a heart attack they're all much younger though and uh, it went right up to very late 70s, early 80s. Uh, but nobody in the group had actually had a heart attack. They had heart problems, whether it be murmurs or needing bypasses, yeah. so on and so forth. But the team are able to um, basically rehabilitate everyone using well-being methods. They talk about nutrition and how to get better nutrition. They talk about the importance of sleep. They talk about the importance of exercise. And exercise really is key for a healthy heart. Uh, what's that been like uh, for yourself with in terms of exercise? You were saying, I wasn't recording a little bit earlier, about you having to walk you, some of your yeah, so regular 5K routes. I went from peak fitness to not being able to walk a 5K route. I think in potentially one and a half to two hours it was taking me. Yeah. That was so frustrating. That I get out of breath on the slightest of inclines, but it was all natural. And the rehab team were just saying, "Stick with it. Let's build back slowly, and you will get back to fitness." It does take time when you've lost that amount of fitness, yeah, or you've not been used to fitness before. But believe me, the rehab program. Should anybody out there be in this situation or have a loved one, have a loved one who is it finds himself in this unfortunate situation please go to the rehab sign up and follow the program because it does get you active and it gets you around people that are all in the same the same situation and you get to share stories and it's there's some amazing uh, some amazing uh, what's the word I've lost the word there's some, there's some amazing uh, emotions that come out about people's backgrounds, their stories, how they've become in that situation and what they're going to do to turn their, their life around a little bit. Yeah. Um, that sounds like fantastic advice, that first, you know, for, I suppose one of the toughest things is ever thinking that you're doing it yourself. Um, so you got some really good advice from that, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I really struggled with, because people in the group were saying, yeah, but why, why have you suffered the heart attack? Not us, at your yeah, age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're very healthy. You've got a decent diet. It wasn't, it wasn't yeah, fantastic, yeah. but it was good. I had some great fitness. Uh, I don't smoke. Yeah. Uh, I do drink, not excessive. Um, and my... My cholesterol was low. Yeah. At only 4.1. Um, why? Well, they, they put it down to stress. Yeah. And I hadn't understood that stress is a massive factor on people. And keeping things locked in, uh, or letting things build up too much. Absolutely, I, I recognise that. All, we're all aware of that more now. Yeah. Since COVID and the pandemic, we hear much more about well-being and um, mental health and awareness and I think that's a really good step because they were already supporting that in the heart in the cardio rehab ward yes they were in, they were explaining the importance of 
potentially yoga and, All right, okay. and meditation and just lying down, being still and trying to let the worry go out of your head. I really, really like that part of it. Have you started doing some of that side of it now? Absolutely. So I joined a, a yoga class locally uh, in, the, in the village and I also started doing yoga online and I incorporate yoga now in my strength and conditioning phase of my training once a week at least and one meditation good so is the meditation kind of self-led thing and other stuff on the internet so how again, do you work that again on the internet uh, i've attended one uh, work facilitated course and i've also got most of it off the off the internet there's a there's a great site which is incorporated in beach body and they do the meditation beach body beach body yeah okay and um they yeah uh, they've got many different sessions yoga whether it be yoga strength yoga yeah. flow yoga core and then normally a 10 minute meditation that's and really good you were saying about sleep do you find the meditation thing that helps you with you know getting off to sleep as well absolutely yeah so sometimes again sleep being aware of your caffeine intake trying yes. to have caffeine after around three o'clock in the afternoon because of its half-life it's still kicking around in the body at 10 o'clock yeah and if you do struggle with sleep that'll only impact on it further so limit the caffeine a little bit and do the 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 quiet down if you like or the meditation or the yoga later on in the evening when you're getting ready to go to bed and uh Hopefully the whole thing will just naturally progress into a very nice, quiet and uh, deep sleep. That's fantastic. Really good advice. I know, especially over the last few years, I've really, really been struggling with, uh, you know, occasionally not being able to get off to sleep properly. It just affects so much about your health and your well-being. So, yeah, the, the sleep for me, when you start realising you're only having six and a half hours sleep it's just not enough yeah it's not enough for your mind and for your body to recover and you've got to have that downtime it's something i've always neglected yeah until the rehab team really started to emphasize the goodness that it will do yeah and with the prep for the marathon um what kind of stuff you got available through the heart foundation team for that is that are there is there anything provided for you for that as well yeah so with the, uh, the coaches, they've been provided by British Art Foundation. They've got some real structure to how the training needs to be. From now, the way we are, say, in the, in the base phase, yes, all the way up until, let's, let's hope we're all still doing the, the final taper phase. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the week or two before race day, but the structure is such that we've got plenty of endurance, to get in, which is long, slow work, keeping a conversational pace, zone two area of our heart rates, yeah. and working on the, the faster threshold sessions, and the, the 10 mile paces, and then of course faster still, the 5k paces, and putting it all together. A little bit similar to the 80-20 rule, yeah. that some people will be aware of, Doing 80% of the of your training in a lower, yeah. uh, easier pace with endurance, building the endurance base, and 20% of that fast, uh, hard effort training. Hi, yes. So I hope you enjoyed that and uh, got a lot out of it. Um, yeah, should probably have done a recording with him at the end saying goodbye. We did actually say goodbye, didn't just dump him and leave it there. Um, but yeah, I'll do that again better on the next video. Um, so if you are or know somebody who is um, has got some experience of heart disease uh, or uh, do some research for into into heart disease for British Heart Foundation, and uh, or you run the London Marathon for British Heart Foundation and wanted want a chance to share your story, uh, just get in touch. Let me know. See if we can work something out. Um, all right. Have a fantastic day. And if you can sponsor me, please do. 
and the link to my fundraising page and to everybody who has uh, joined me on one of these is in the comments below. Cheers. Bye-bye.